Hey, this is Roland from netbooknews.com and .de and I'm right here in Berlin, Germany with Peter Stuhe from Sweden and he's one of the developers of Coreboot. So Peter, tell us about Coreboot. What is Coreboot actually? Coreboot is an open source BIOS replacement. So we take out the, the factory BIOS from, from the PC and we replace it with open source software, open source free software uh, that we develop in a community. So what's the purpose of the whole thing? You want to keep everything open, right? Because it's about open source and... The openness is, is one big deal. Uh, there are many advantages to, to Core Boot. One uh, which we'll look at in just a bit is uh, boot speed. Core Boot starts quite a bit faster than, than all the factory BIOS, the commercial BIOS products. And um, there are also some technical benefits to Core Boot because it's open source and we've written it in C instead of assembly language. It's much easier to work with and much easier to customize if you, if you want to do that. And we also support starting a large a number of different operating systems. So and the whole thing would actually work with Linux and would it actually work on Windows or it with can Windows? Start Windows as well, yes. All right. Um, and you can even build Linux into the boot flash. This is a, a nice feature of, of Core Boot. So uh, a traditional BIOS does really two things. It does hardware initialization first, and then it starts the operating system, so reads from the master boot record and so on. Core Boot only does the first part of that, the hardware initialization. And after that, Core Boot starts a separate program called a payload. The, uh, the core boot part and the payload are both put into the boot flash chip on the main board. So not on the hard drive, but in the boot flash. And the payload can really be any program. So besides the standard bootloaders that can start your operating system, be it Windows or Linux or whatever, it can actually be the operating system kernel itself. So you can put core boot and the Linux kernel into the boot flash then you have a Linux system that is always available uh, even if you don't have a hard drive in your machine. Well, that would be a pretty smart thing, right? Um, so, so let's just give it a shot. So what we've got here is a Lenovo ThinkPad X60. So that's about, how old is it? Five years? This is, this is even older. I think it's a 2006 model. All right. Um, so that's a Core 2 Duo, right? Yes, Core 2 Duo, uh, 2.0 gigahertz. So it's the high-end uh, processor that they put into these machines. Um, 2 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM. And um, I've upgraded it with a modern SSD drive, uh, a Samsung 830 series SSD drive. All right. Well, then just let's give it a shot and see how All long right. it takes to boot up the whole system. Powering on. Just a little hint, as soon as we make it to the core boot screen that you're going to see, that's the desktop already. That is the full Linux system running, yeah. And there we are, and here's the web browser. So that was, uh, that was booting the entire system. So how long did that actually take? About 10 seconds I from the pressing it, of the button? But I think it's uh, on the order of 5, five seconds actually. Well, it's just, if it's only 5 seconds, let's just do it again. Let's do it again. I have a, a, a reboot button here prepared. So I'll try to time it this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine, all right. Nine seconds. You were you were uh, closer with with the ten. So that's actually about ten seconds from pressing pressing the on button of your notebook to the whole desktop. So you're right yes. away ready to work. Um, you said Wi-Fi is going to take a little longer, so it's probably about fifteen seconds for the whole system to boot up and get you well, ready for the internet. I think Wi-Fi takes just one more second. Oh, really. so. it depends on how fast the uh, the Wi-Fi driver also will find uh, the access point if there's uh, yeah. If there's a lot of All right, so there's points, it might take a little bit longer. A couple also. of other things you need to take care of. Yes, but the machine uh, or the base system, so for running local stuff, uh, starts really, really quickly. All right. So, um, so what are the chances that we're going to see devices in the next couple of months or years, actually, uh, with Core Boot? Because there's a whole market of um, proprietary um, BIOS and UEFI vendors. Yes, so this, this machine is a bit old and in Core Boot we've been sort of trying, for a long time we've been trying to catch up with, uh, with the hardware. But last year we got an announcement from, from AMD that they would um, provide Core Boot support and develop Core Boot support for all their new processors and chipsets, which they are doing. 
And also just a few days ago, uh, you might have noticed that we have support now in the core boot source code for the next generation Google Chromebook, which is based on the Ivy Bridge, uh, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge uh, platform. So we have that code in core boot now, which means, uh, and, and this is the, the current Intel platform. So that means that with a lot less effort, it's still a big effort to support a new system in core boot, but with a lot less effort because the base platform is supported already, we can add support for even more uh, um, laptops and uh, PCs. All right. So if there's any OEMs out there or other software companies that want to use core boot, you're pretty much happy to work with them, right? We're, we're uh, happy to welcome them. Uh, join us in, in working on Coreboot, absolutely. And uh, there are about 250 main boards supported uh, at this time, different sizes from small embedded over standard desktop uh, to server boards and some laptops also as the, the ThinkPads. So can you, so the ThinkPads are supported, any other manufacturers that you know of? Uh, the ThinkPad X60 and the ThinkPad T60 are supported. All right. Uh, there are also some rugged uh, netbooks made for field field use All that right. um, are based on the same platform as this ThinkPad. They're also supported. Um, yeah, those are the laptops. All right. Laptops that are so that's pretty basic support so far. Yes, only a limited number so far, but with the new support from uh, uh, developed by Google for the Chromebook, uh, we're going to be able to add support for many new, um, many new, modern machines and and laptops especially, which is uh, exciting, I think. All right then. Good luck, Peter and Thanks. Core Boot. Yeah. And Coreboot just to finish this, yeah, that's right. There's the Coreboot. plug right there. Website if you want to go there and, and check it out. And we have a mailing list as well and IRC. All right. So just to uh, finish things off, kind of, let's just do the reboot stuff. We'll do the reboot one more time. One more time, yeah. It's and then fun. We will leave you alone for tonight. And so when this first text shows up on the screen, the CBIOS, that is the payload. So by that time, Core Boot has actually finished already and all the rest is... Uh, just the typical Linux boot Just up. the typical startup. Oh, okay. So I didn't have them. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks a bunch, Peter. Thank you. See you later. Bye. I was rolling with netbooknews.com. I'll see you. Bye.